Okay, so in this video I'm gonna tell you how to transform the data uh, to the panel data set easily and effortlessly using RStudio. So, as you know, when you download data from World Bank and Eurostat, usually they look like this. Like you have country and then you have different periods like let's say 2010, 2011, 2012 and so on and so forth. So let's say country A, country B. However, uh, when you design panel data set which then can be used for regression analysis in eViews, Bretto or Stata, it should look like this. So you have country like let's say A Transpose B Okay, so when I was a student, in order to get something like that out of something like that, I just copy paste it. But probably you won't have to do this if you learn how to use this code. Okay, so the first step is to transform the data set you download from the World Bank into something like this. So you delete all the rows containing some information like description of the variable and so on. You delete um, the ID indicator. I will tell you why later, because for some reason when I added ID it didn't work well so you know if you are not really willing to improve or customize my code you can just do the same and finally you have to replace all the country names with some numbers so in world bank you have it like this in alphabetical order like uh, aruba angola no probably angola aruba and so on and so forth so actually the good idea is to replace everything with numbers um, because for some reason R is not really good in processing text data and I'm not sure I know how to fix it. So, you know, it's just a safer option. Like when you have a data set, you can just replace it or you can put some table in appendix like one stands for Aruba indicator, two stands for Angola indicator and so on and so forth. Okay, so when you have something like this, you have to save it as CSV uh, file, CS file, okay, whatsoever. You've got the idea, like this type of file. So here I have data for population, and here I have data for GDP per capita. So make sure that the period of observation is the same. So my data, um, so for my data set, the last period of observation is 2019, and the first one is 1960. So the same should apply to this data set. Otherwise, your data will be messed up. Also, please make sure that you have the same number of cross-sectional units, I mean countries, and, you know, the sequence is just the same. So when you are done with this, go to our studio and import data set. So that's why actually it's a good idea to save everything in CS file because then you can upload everything relatively easily. And yes, I want to have heading, even though, as you can see, I did not provide any indicator for ID. That's why I just have X. Import. Again, import data set from text. Uh, GDP per capita, open. Heading, yes, import. Ta-da. Okay, so now you can toss a coin and select one variable randomly. So, sorry. Oh. Okay, finally. Uh, so the idea is that you just have to select some data set. So here I will start with GDP per capita. So data is GDP per capita. That's how I assign the data set I'm going to work with. ID will be the first column in GDP per capita data set. So here I have ID. ID. Fine. Yeah, 264 countries in total. So then you do not have to do anything. 
you know, it's just done automatically. So this piece of code just calculates the number of cross-sectional units. What you have to do is to provide the first period and the last period. So then uh, this piece of code will just calculate the number of periods for you, which is 60. You're going to use this later on. So the next step is to specify the matrix. So in my matrix, uh, there should be the number of rows, like in panel data set, as you remember, is equal to the number of cross-sectional units times the number of periods. So number of rows should be equal to C, number of cross-sectional units, times the number of periods. And number of columns should be 2 plus the number of your variables. But you can specify more. So for instance, here I can say I have 20 columns, you know, just for the sake of safety. Okay, so this command will basically just put the expressions for year in your matrix. Like you can check what will happen after I execute this command. Um, I guess I did not execute it yet. Oh no, I didn't. Okay. So maybe not here, but here. Okay. So this is called the loop and you have to highlight all this ex the entire expression before running this, otherwise it will not work. Like if you see something like this, four, open bracket, close bracket. And now let's see what happened to matrix. So basically, in this case, I just introduced the column with periods. And now it looks like a panel data set, you see? Like you have the entire period of observation till 2019, then... Uh, no. It's not visible here, you know, because not all the data are displayed, but you can check this by uh, clicking here, matrix. So now I will do the same for country. You know, just replacing the first column in my matrix with vector of countries. So now let's check what happens with matrix. Yeah, so I have first country, 1960 till 2019. Then I have the second country from 1960 till 2019. As I said, it already looks like a data set, like a panel data set. Okay, so finally, here you have to specify the variable. Like I use GDP per capita. Uh, that's why the first variable will be based on the same data set I've been using, and I do not have to specify a new data set. I have to get rid of the first column, like country ID, then I have to transpose, then I have to specify as vector, and then I have to split it into columns again. But you do not really have to know this in order to use this. So run, fine. And now let's check what will happen with the matrix. Ta-da! Okay, so everything is fine uh, for Aruba at the first country. The first observation takes place in 1986, and as far as I remember from data set, it's fine. We can check. So first country, yes, here you have this value. So as you can see, everything was transformed correctly. So now let's do the second variable. So now I use population. Well, let's check what happens to the matrix. Yeah, so now I have also the data on population. So you do the same. So here, um, like, I will post this code. Like, obviously, you just replace the name of the data set with the name of your data set. So, I don't know, whatever are the variables you're interested in. Uh, I did this for... Okay, so this was third variable, fourth variable, fifth variable, sixth variable, seventh. Yeah, so I did this for seven variables. Like, you can just replace the names of, you know, 
this data sets all the time and it will work. However, if you want to estimate more than seven variables, then actually you will have to copy paste one of these commands. And I will just show you briefly which names should be replaced. So instead of data six, I have data seven, um, maybe M17, seven, 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 seven. So basically here all the time I just replaced the names of those like supplementary intermediary matrices. So yeah, as I said, it's up to you. Okay. So, but if you have seven variables or less, you will not have to change anything, like just change the number of these variables. So to sum up, in order to use this code, you have to upload CS CSV uh, data sets uh, with uh, no name assigned to the cross-sectional unit ID. Um, then you just replace it here and here, obviously, because this is the name of the data set. You have to specify the period of observation, and then all the time you have to change the names of the data sets depending on the variables you use. So obviously, these names should coincide with the number uh, with the names of data sets you upload. So once you are done, like this is the final step, you have to write down this matrix at the data frame go to library, like library means that uh, program will seek some comment in the library. So again, you do not really have to understand this in order to use it. And this is for saving the data set uh, on the desktop in my case, but if you, you will have to change this, you have to specify your own path. So I will call this demo, demonstration. Okay, so now I go to Excel. I know that my file should be on the desktop demo. Yes. Okay, it does not look fine, you know, but this is what you're gonna do. Highlight the first column, data, text column, delimited. Um, in my case, it was comma delimited. Okay, yeah, now it looks fine. Finish. Ta-da! So, this is GDP per capita, because this was the third column specified, and this is population. Again, you just look at the sequence of this program code. So, it was uh, GDP per capita was in the third column, then I did it for population. So, oh yeah, okay. So if you are not really willing to figure out, you know, the logic behind this code, uh, the sequence in which you add your variables to matrix, like here, the first variable, the second variable, the third variable, is the sequence of columns. So as you remember, I specified 20 columns and you know, some of them were just unused. So now I will just delete. And here we have it. Here you have 15,840 observations collected within five minutes. Probably I could spend another 10 minutes and collect more observations for more variables, but whatever. So as I said, it's up to you. Uh, here I did it for all the world economies and regions uh, available in the World Bank database. Uh, you can do something different, like you can select some countries in advance. Um, just make sure that the sequence is the same and the number of countries is the same. Always pay attention to having the same number of periods, like start date and end date in your period of observation. or like, if you wish, you can just filter. Like, for instance, if I'm not really interested in... Uh, so, if I have to choose another period of observation, I can just, I don't know, like, get rid of 1960 and start in 1965. Uh, I can get rid of all the 
Okay, so this is another thing. If you have an A, like basically it just means that this is an empty observation, but you cannot uh, use it for Gretel or Evius because it's basically text and the program will struggle with trying to interpret this. So then you can just use replace an A with empty space, replace all. Yes. Ta-da! So have fun. I believe it's relatively easy to do in Excel when you already have all of those observations. Uh, if you wish, you can filter empty observations, you know, to ensure that you have balanced panel. So it's up to you. Okay, so that was it. I believe I want to hope <laughs> it was clear. And if you want to use this, but you struggle, do not hesitate to contact me. So that's it. And thank you for watching.